I guess I should have gotten it. <laughs> Not weird, but I didn't. Hey, everybody. It's Friday. Happy, happy Friday. It is the 21st day of the 21st week of the 21st year in the 21st century. Whoa! Just, just so everybody knows, welcome to Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month, 7 p.m. Pacific. Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brad, and follow the Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast. And we also have a YouTube channel, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. How is everybody out there? Um, we're in LA, so the weather's been spectacular. Um, we have a very full house tonight. I'm so stoked. I could always say, you know, as long as there's more women, you can you just keep having more women and more women and more women? It's not a problem for me. But <laughs> if you want to call in, it's 323. Hold on, I was just going to give out my cell phone number again. It is 323. <laughs> Five two four two five nine nine three two three five two four two five nine nine. We have a whole bunch of ladies. I'm going to go through really quickly so we can actually get to the meat and potatoes. And I said potatoes. Yes, I did. Um, of the uh, of the podcast. So we have Roxanne Rosen joining us today. We have Cheryl Murphy. We have Mara Shane. We have Cara Noble. We have Jenny McNulty. And back because she just freaking loves us is <laughs> Suzanne Westenhofer. Oh, oh. So Jenny and her, she and Jenny, I don't know, it's grammar's as shit. Jenny tonight. and she, you did she it. She had a show last week, two weeks ago, at the Ventura Harbor Comedy Show. It's the Rainbow Night. They're on um, once a month, if I'm not mistaken. I think June 10th was June 10th the next one. Yes, ma'am. June 10th out in Ventura. It was hysterically funny. I don't know who the comedians are for next for next for June, but Jenny, I'm sure will tell us if she has anybody lined up. It was so wonderful um, to just go out there and actually be normal. It was just like normal. It was, it was really normal. And then after the show, Jenny, myself, Suzanne, were outside Kibitzin and everyone was talking and it was just normal. So I want to thank you ladies for saying that that is my first outing and I appreciate what you guys put together and it was just so amazing and people like don't give me shit Ventura it's not that far blah 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 so you people who are saying Ventura is far are the so ones far, who say far, oh god I have to go to the valley no it's not far it is way it's not far. far so please for a great night of entertainment and it is LGBT plus LMNOP you know, for us, you know, oh, you know Jenny, for doing it for all these years. Um, but out of, I uh, just did a quick, whatever. <laughs> we have a guest tonight. There's a lot of boxes. Um, we have a guest tonight. I have met her off and on, you know, at different events and stuff. Um, she is a clairvoyant artist an astrologer, a psychic medium. She creates and heals in the multidimensional realms of music, writing, film, and is a private consultant. She graduated from Michigan, but what was impressed me is she's a USC graduate with an, an MFA in film production. Um, she's you should have been far more impressed by the U of M. <laughs> I, know, I was waiting for that. <laughs> by the what? You should have been far more impressed by the University of Michigan, but go on. I'm sorry. Oh, in Michigan. <laughs> Where's, I didn't even wear my t-shirt tonight. Fuck. Um, <laughs> so, are you from Michigan? No, um, so she has been she's trained with Michigan. renowned. Yeah, right. She's been trained by renowned psychic Chris Cahill. Um, she has a website, IamAmadeus.com. Um, but what I found, you know, I, I look. I, I talked to her a few times, probably at parties, and how she came to my attention to even have as a guest is Jenny McNulty's sister. Deborah McNulty. Um, she, I don't know, on mess Facebook Messenger, she goes, you know, there's a friend of mine, a really good friend that she should be on your show. And I said, sure. Didn't give me your name. I just figured out the dots. It was you at some point. And she's, I'm like, sure, tell her. And then, you know, month passed, Messenger Deborah. Uh, she hasn't called me yet. And then she said that your your cat passed away. So you were going through oh, a briefing period. Sorry. So, no. so I let up on that and then probably like probably a week, like a few days before I actually reached out to you. 
I said to Deborah, really? <laughs> What's up? And then she, and then I said, and then Deborah's like, I'll, I'll, I'll call her again. And then I'm like, fuck it. So then I, I sent you, a, I think, Messenger, or maybe I even had your phone number, and we texted and we connected. I think that's why. I suck at Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so, I don't have the neuron. I don't see it. So apologies. <laughs> no, no worries. But then the point is, as we discussed it, like really briefly, you know, when things are meant to be, it's meant to be, and things happen at the exact right time it's supposed to happen. Yes. So, you know, you're also, you know, you're also in rock bands too. I mean, she was in a, she had a band called Forest for the Trees. She had a, she had a duo called Luminary that was signed. It wasn't like, you know, some of these bands that, you know, they just play and they go, oh, I'm famous. No, she actually had a record deal. So, um, so, and I don't even know how to start because there's so <laughs> much about you. You are so multifaceted. So let's start with, What's your sign? Because that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, I'm a Libra. I Are you a true Libra? Libra? I'm a true Libra, but I have so much, and I feel like somebody here has Aries in them. I feel like it. Me. Yeah. I have four. Yeah. <laughs> Suzanne and Roxanne. Okay, there. I knew there's some fire here. I know Jenny's is the only one I know because she's born on my favorite day, and every day that I've had a record deal, it's on her birthday. And wow. I'm excited when I met her. That's my my special day. But what's um, the day? Uh, my day is October 2nd. Jenny's is August 3rd. My mm -hmm. favorite day. Wow. Oh, really? oh, really? And of course, what did I do today but give a healing randomly to a young man born on August 3rd? And I mentioned yeah. that. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. So, um, but I, yes, I am a Libra. It's an interesting question. It, you know, I, I am a true Libra with a shit ton of Aries in just about every department. Yes. That challenges me to be it but it really is me and i don't know how much people know about astrology but there's something called the north and south node and it, to me it's a pretty important placement sometimes more than anything in the chart and it tells you a little about about your karma but i would say not karma like bad deeds but what what you've come from if you believe in past lives or past knowings it's often how you survive in your family unit or in the world and that is always opposite for everyone of their north node, which is your dharma, what you're going toward despite yourself in some sense. Or sometimes it's very copacetic and people don't notice. I have one of the little shit show uh, situations of being a Libra with a Libra south node in the same exact degree as my son. And what that all means, you don't have to know, is basically I have to be me, but I really can't be me. But when I'm me, I have to be me, I am. But I'm an Aries, but I'm me, but I'm not, but I'm me. <laughs> so, and I thought I was yeah. screwed up. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, right. I, I thought my chart was screwed up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you it know, just, just at this moment, I am so grateful I don't have Libra in my chart. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I appreciated my Libra when I was very Libra, to answer your question, because I was operating as a Libra with my South Node and I was a Libra. But sort of around the age 36 to 40, in my opinion, although I don't believe in time, but for the sake of discussion, one starts to get pulled pretty thoroughly toward their north node, which often will show up as, uh, you know, a midlife crisis and, you know, yeah. one genre or, you know, a loss of faith, you know, it can be a zillion different things. But really, you'll find around that time that that north node, it pulls you like the north star. And for some people like me, you're saying, this is not me. And everybody's petting me on the head going, we love you, Libra. You get along with everyone. You're such a mediator. You're so sweet, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going, but spontaneous travel. And when I do stuff and I jump on a show that I have no goddamn clue what it's about, that's my Aries. <laughs> How about you, baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, I, and then everything works, you know, everything works when I'm, you know, sort of front stage, but I would do everything not to be. And every, you know, that record deal I got by accident, standing on a stage, singing a song with somebody that was a big performer and I hadn't performed, but when I was there doing it, then, then the world started rushing in. So if that makes sounds sense. like a star is born. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then, you know, I'd, I'd go back and say, how can I help somebody? You know, you know, as I learned that to navigate that axis in my chart, if that makes some sense. So I have a question for yes. you. Did, were you talking about your true node or your north node? Uh, that, thing? Yes. Uh, well, it depends how you do it. I was talking in a generic way, north node, which can be the true node. 
So I'm looking at my true note and it's Libra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love how I just put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Hi. Roxanne, we know. Um, but, but Amadeus, how did you like? Obviously, you're a clairvoyant, you're psychic. How, like, like I, I hear, I've heard, um, you know, a lot of people who have the gift, they've had it at a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, when did you first notice this, this that you had this ability? I. It's such an interesting question. You know, I obviously I've been asked. You know, it's it's a question people wonder. Did it just go funk or? Um, for me, a lot of the journey of it is semantics. I grew up in a family where no one believes in religion, uh, biophysicist father, you know, in a lab, cross-cultural psychologist mother, you know, humans created God as a concept. So I had no incense. I had no, you know, mystical stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but I would always kind of know something that was going to, well, I, should, I don't know. I'm equivocating. I'm laboring. <laughs> I would know things <laughs> that would happen. I would say, you know, pink shirts like are going to be in, you know, really, really young, but I mean, a slew of things. And this was attributed to my being called astute because that was a permissible word in the academic town I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mom, a psychologist and some wise people around me would always call me Amadeus going on 80. I mean, literally, <laughs> I remember being one years old and I'm, you know, really trying to regress. That's my area. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so, so I had, I, you know, I can trace back and see all these things. I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger on a TV uh, when I was little at a friend's house and in Barbarella or something where they dubbed him. I didn't know who he was. I don't think many people did. And I said, that man's going to try to be president. And everyone in the room laughed at me, you know, I mean, they got to me and speak English. <laughs> so it would be things like that. Or it is I'm, laughable. Come on. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> that, that, and um, what's her name? Uh, what's Caitlin. Her name? Caitlin Jenner trying to run for something. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's, a, that's a whole that's a whole five shows. Yeah, and we know that's not going to happen. So, <laughs> but you know things like that. So, so then what happened? Um, you know, my studentness was there. I kept adding in degrees because I really, truly would write a screenplay overnight. And <laughs> I'm of a generation where I did not have a cell phone and I did not get to read screenplays. It sounds so funny to anybody in their 20s, but I didn't have access to them. And I would just, <clears throat> you know, like vomit out something. And, and, and I, they just say, you don't need to rewrite it. And it was very strange, you know. Mm. And so I went off to USC and I had a similar experience. So what I was doing was channeling. That's why I did well in school. I, I, I now understand. So I was always doing these things without realizing it. And I knew mean someone else was doing your homework. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. I'm done now. <laughs> you just called me out. Um, <laughs> someone else. <laughs> so to truncate and get to it, uh, what happened was I got that record deal. I was still at USC and directing. Um, they wanted to go, it was a famous music producer. I have had a, several of them and that's, that's not the one on DreamWorks. And with that one, they wanted me and my music partner to go to London and busk and go use the Beatles gear and record with Peter Gabriel. I mean, just, just far out stuff. This all happened within a day, by the way, okay? Wow. And I had a sinus headache because they were still smoking at the Troubadour. And I said, I want to heal myself, you know, and the, the <laughs> producers were like, little idiot child, you are, <laughs> no one has this happen to them. So you really need to go to a doctor and get on a plane. And I tried, but then they kept telling me I wasn't being responsible. And that is my keyword. They could have said anything else. No one, but I told you I was going on 80. I was such a fucking adult. Uh, my, can I say fuck on this? Yeah, I'm absolutely. Oh, yeah. My favorite word. Okay. And if not, too late. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I, you know, I went. I went to a famous music producer's doctor. I was given amoxicillin. And within 20 minutes, basically, my life ended. Really. You know, I mean, it's worthy of long shows. But I literally remember being in the car going, something's wrong with me. And I was really ill. And I was a nude skin model prior to that. I'd had one chicken pock. I'd never been sick. I didn't drink. I, I was just kind of silly golden. And nobody could figure it out. They held the record deal, but I became allergic to everything in the world. COVID's a breeze for me. I mean, like a breeze. No, really, compared to what I went through. Mm. So when you're that ill, you try many different modalities. And about two years after Eastern, Western, I almost died of a systemic staph infection. And actually, antibiotics saved my life at Cedar sinai um, 
I wow. kept seeing this thing at the Bodhi Tree. I hope you all know the famous yes. store in West Hollywood. You know, when there were magazines and on the back, there was a woman's face and she was going like this and it said astrology. I didn't realize she was a psychic. I wouldn't have even known the difference. And I kept seeing it and there's a payphone over it. <laughs> payphone back in the day. Wait, and yeah. I one day just said, I will call that number. And if, uh, you know, this is so silly now, but if, if they answer or whoever this is, I, I'll just do it. And she answered. And if she hadn't answered, different trajectory. So she answered and I made an appointment and I walked into this place in Calabasas where I had never been. She, I was in a hoodie. I was really, you know, really skinny, which looks great, you know, in LA. So you can tell, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously emaciated, but rock on, you're healthy. And um, she didn't even look up. She had my first name and my birth date and said, what the hell happened to you on July 4th of last year? You almost wow. died. And that's exactly when I almost died. It was just, it's, it's by the grace of uh, Fleetwood Mac's, uh, Fleetwood Mac actually in some way that I'm alive for another time. And um, I went, huh. You know, and then she just rattled off all these things and said I'd be on all these interview shows, which is really funny. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and said, so you're the most psychic person that's ever walked in here, and you have the closest chart to John Lennon I've ever seen. Uh, do you know that? I'm like, no. And she said, well, are you in a music duo? And I went, well, I, <laughs> and I was, and we were called like a new Lennon McCartney, but I was so resistant. I wasn't really, you know, I was half tracking. So she tried to get me to come to a psychic class. And I said, no, I, I'm not even well enough to come here. And um, basically what happened is I went, I thought everybody would be like a crystal gazer and they weren't. And then they didn't want to be friends with me in the class because they said I was psychic. And I went through this whole thing of people running up and because I got to truncate this. So you have a show of people just over and over saying you're psychic, you're this. And finally, finally, you know, I started opening up to to that had a natural ability with astrology just from the get-go it's just it's the same as music it's just it's the way i see things uh, like sacred geometry it's how i do music it's how i do everything <clears throat> everything i do is one hello <laughs> mm -hmm. everything i do is one line of just reading frequency mm -hmm. it sounds like it's all over but that's what it is so then i got some training when i met chris cahill on one of the best stories ever for another time and really what it was was grounding if you weren't taught how to be psychic, but how to get the fuck out of my way and actually be in my body and, and, and have all the info. I actually had the info. I, I didn't have to learn it. I always had all of this stuff, but how can I be in my body? And, and I learned my lexicon, you could say, and it takes years to learn your own personal lexicon, I, I, I think, um, of what this means and that means. And then through time, each one just kept adding in uh, reluctantly because I could hear people's names when I you know and see a piece of jewelry and things and so the medium thing came in and so yes I've had it since birth but a lot of uncovering very kind of common story I think of uncovering and committing it's a huge commitment it's a huge commitment at least for me you know to to keep this vehicle clean so that my lexicon's clean I think Cheryl, you 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 you, yeah. you were nodding a lot during what what uh, Amadeus was saying. Yeah, I totally resonate with the. I'm wondering, you know, did you have a near death experience? Do you think when that yeah. happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, like I several. Uh, I several. Don't, wow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have. Um, but you know, I, maybe I'll uncover. You know, really honestly, I don't. I think in my brain, my very you know rational brain, I didn't have. You know, I got hit by lightning and this. But I had many days where I was going like this, going, "Am I going to be on the planet? Can I just eat light and air?" So I, I think I had a series of them, for sure. I mean, for sure, I didn't think I was going to be here like for years. You know, in and out. So yeah, that's but amazing. Privately, you know, so yeah, privately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I knew. Mm -hmm. And that's wow. exactly what it's like is being grounded brought you back, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> As I put feet, I have to be in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> I'm great out there. Can I be here? <laughs> you know. So I you have John Lennon's birthday. Excuse me? I'm wondering if you have John Lennon's birthday. I don't. And that's where astrology is interesting. Of course, I didn't know I was supposed to be born then. And, you know, somebody yanked me out on October 2nd. So I've Gandhi's birthday. Okay. I have the same day. I've decided. That's, but, that's interesting. But when you look at a chart, 
I have, I do now I know enough. I, I have the closest astrology and then I have so many more things. I thought my brother murdered him. I have a brother, not my family, whose name Michael David Chapman. And when I saw it, when I was little, I'm very good friends. I, wow. I mean, I'm signed by people with the Beatles. It just, it's, it's everywhere. It's just, it's around me all the time. Like all the time. Weird. <laughs> I didn't grow up with parents that listened to the Absolutely. Beatles. So that wasn't a thing. Mm. And when I got signed, it wasn't a thing. I got yelled at for having a melody and not screaming the chorus. So, <laughs> yeah. God. So, so this takes up obviously a lot of energy, a lot of time. So what do you do for fun? I mean, I know this is a passion. I know this is a calling, but, mm -hmm. but what else do you do? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, prior to the full-on commitment, I'd say, you know, doing it with clients. I mean, through art, it clears me. So right now, I feel like somebody removed my genitals. And because my studio is in storage and it has been for a couple of years. So that would just cleanse me. Frequencies, playing guitar, just, just you know, just did it. Um, I, I always had liked, I know I'm giving a long answer. I'd always like things to be very uh, synergistic, you know, like it's running through me that I, I got laughed at for not having a hobby. <laughs> like I skipped school to read encyclopedias. Okay. Like, like, and that was fun, you know? So, um, but what gets me, what gets me cleared if I can't do music really is tactile, tactile stuff, tactile. And I'm, I've not had as much of that meaning interacting with beauty in the world. Um, it, it can be nature, but it can be the sky. Um, but, but my hands, you know, my hands, like I write with a pen and paper. I can't use I, the writer, you know, I mean, everything I got to, I don't even use a computer, you know, I have notebook. If you saw, I have a storage unit I pay $320 for, for notebook you know, a month. Um, that, that tactile thing, I, getting in my body, I see you nodding, Cheryl. It's, yeah. it's so important. And so when I get in my body doing that, that brings me pleasure. Uh, I will say a very, very good petite Verdot will give me some pleasure. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Is it a wine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing yeah. is, obviously, you know, it might've been a sexual position. I wasn't sure. <laughs> That would too. Yes, that would very much uh, be the source of pleasure that would be get clearing with the right person. <laughs> I mean, when you have a reading, you know, like Suzanne and, and Jenny are, are comedians and, and they do other things, but they're comedians. So Jenny and Suzanne, like when you prep for a show, like what's the pre-prep? Do you guys go into a zone? I mean, what, like what gets, how do you prepare to be on stage and, and, and deliver this? Jenny, please take this question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, I usually have, ideally, I've had the set, wrist, set list done from the night before, but for me, everything is in like little chunks. So I just kind of remember little chunks. So for me, it's just kind of looking at my notes and going over it and trying to remember the chunks to the point where it's not like I've got a photographic memory or anything, but um, I will like literally take my set list and fold it into so that I remember the top part here and this part here and this part there and then just kind of go and do it. So, I mean, Suzanne and I have both been doing it for a long time. So it's, it's kind of a question of more, um, you know, knowing, you, you know, your material is just what stuff you're going to use. So a lot of times you'll get somewhere, although I don't remember, it's been so fucking long. <laughs> into a club and you can see okay that's not going to work the stuff he planned like you get there and you were expecting a certain type of crowd and you get like a bunch of drunks or you're going in expecting a bunch of drunks that are just going to want dick stuff and you get a bunch of like oh okay this is different things so you kind of got to read the room and if you're fortunate enough to have somebody going up in front of you mm -hmm. um, and you can really read the room and see what's going to work so it's it's just kind of that and Suzanne mm -hmm. <laughs> I do whatever Jenny does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because every artist, every person, you know, they prep for something. I mean, there, I mean, Cara's, you know, sister-in-law, ex-sister-in-law that I used to manage. I mean, her thing before a show was stay out of the room. She would meditate, but she would meditate to like nine inch nails, you know, yeah. or, I mean, like, and you'd hear this in the room, you know what I mean? And it was like, don't touch her you know, and don't bother. And then like, and then of course, if during that period, if my phone rang, it's called the bat phone. It's like, there's something terribly wrong. You know? And then it was like, take a gulp. I mean, you know, um, you know, I mean, I have a job, but it's, it's a different type of job. I'm not performing, but you know, there's so much prep that goes in, but I truly feel that. Like 
I get to my photo shoots really early, just mm -hmm. so I'm there scoping everything out, sort of, sort of being Zen, being grounded before the chaos starts to come in. And then I'm there, I've got, I'm grounded. And as each person comes in, sort of like I feel the energy and I sort of gauge, you know, sort of like it's, 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 a, it's a, it starts to grow and grow and grow and grow. And I just, but I have to have that quiet time mm -hmm. before anybody arrives to be with myself. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, I mean, I had spoken to you every day and I'm like, oh yeah, I did tarot cards for a while. And, you know, and I just was like, oh, I'll give them free tarot readings. You know, COVID's here and, you know, I haven't done it in a long time and blah, blah, blah. And I started doing it and I, because it was free, because everybody likes free stuff. Um, and I was like doing, I was telling you 13, 14 readings a day, like, and booking, 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 booking. And in the first few days, you know, the first week was fun. I could do this. This is cool. It's free. Um, and then, you know, then what would do then the second week more free by the third week, I was exhausted, exhausted. And I think Cheryl, cause I told Cheryl, Cause I said, oh my God. Cause I was even like surprised with myself going, oh my God, people are calling me back wanted second readings because the first one was so on board. I guess I'm, I, I'm good. I guess I know what I'm doing. And it's not about knowing what you're doing. It's about opening up the vessel to allow things to come in. Right. But, you know, I think Cheryl, you did tell me, I think you said, you know, Hey, you know, before the reading, you know, you have to sort of do this this thing before and then as soon as you finish oh, you yeah. need to cleanse yourself to, to carry all this stuff and energy and it was very interesting so amadeus like what what do you have a process do you have a yeah yeah sorry <laughs> i do because it annoys a lot of people that live with me at times <laughs> um i do pretty uh unless i was just doing uh like this lenormand tarot like i said or, or, or like a short thing i do pretty intensive readings uh for people and they sometimes they're two hours but i'll prep for hours and hours because i'll i'll do every modality because i'm a nut <laughs> prior and I, I usually only have i don't know who they are uh you know so it's just a name and a birthday but I go through all the modalities. I don't, uh, I really don't leave the house. I get up because I need my clear slate. Um, it's very important what direction for me to sit in the house I'm in now because I can't clear some other stuff. But I keep, I keep my world very, very grounded and narrow, meaning the room where I am, where I sit, what's around me, what I allow in, I'm not going to be all over this. I tell certain friends that want to text me all day, you know, email me. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, the, so my threads are, you know, so I don't, have a cross thread, have to take it out, you know? So it's extreme discipline. It, it's sort of like uh, the discipline, well, it is like for performing, but in a different way. It's not because I'm performing, but because I want my channel. I like, I, I like to be accurate. <laughs> I want to help. I want to, I want to, I want, I want to be a one shop stop, which I get called sometimes, you know? And, and so I feel that I want to move whatever way the conversation goes uh, and turn the crystal wherever it's needed. So I may do four hours of work about this and it's that five minutes that I brought in something else and that will be what we do. To do that, I need a lot of clarity in my space. So yeah, I meditate, I sit in a certain direction. I didn't always do that, but I like to now um, limit what is coming into my space. And then after uh, is, is actually sometimes the hardest thing because after, you know, you, you, you know, a healer giving a healing, you have a release, just like performance, but I'm drained. I am drained just about 99.9% .9 of the time we're performing. I'm not, it's different, you know, mm -hmm. and to get back to, okay. in a day where I've taken an entire day and the world comes in or needs this, I, that discipline I can often lose. And that would be, you know, a shower would be great or a bath. I don't have a bathtub right now, which is awful. Uh, that's a oh. quick, you know, quick fix. I know it's like, Oh my God. I no, uh, I couldn't I have to go to a new level of, you know, uh, understanding, you know, so maybe you, know. you should go to Eureka because where yes, <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. a two, there's a two story <laughs> house for two people. I only have three <laughs> And there's, no, there's, two, there's two bathtubs in here, you guys. The spa and the sauna. What, one of, <laughs> no, and that would do it. That would do it. <laughs> Nobody cares where I am. Let's go over there. I'm all for bathtubs. Cara, what do you put in your bathtub? That, if I thought you guys could drive here, if you're in LA, it's like 13 hour drive. Uh -huh. 
Oh, so man, wow. we could have done the show right from that right. bedroom. Right, <laughs> and all of us just all around the bed, oh, like wow. between the sheets, pajama party. Okay. Everywhere you're watching between the sheets here on United Broadcasting Network, our guest is Amadeus, clairvoyant, the rest of the girls, and of course, Suzanne Westenhofer is joining us again. Um, you can call us. Please call us. 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. Oh, wait, I want to ask you this. Hold on. Hold on. I'm getting the number. 323-524-2599. What, what, Suzanne? What's the matter? You, 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 what, I'm just going to I'm gonna call in to that question for Amadeus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amadeus? Yeah, listen, you, uh, you don't know me, but here's the thing. I'm a skeptic and I completely don't believe in any of the things you were talking about until I'm going to say this is freaking me out a little bit. Then you were talking about it and you were talking about the time you take to prepare and all that shit. And I'm going, <laughs> um, so she must really believe this. And then I'm like, and she, you don't look stupid. And I'm just like, but so, um, say something to me, like, why should I even believe in this? Or why should I be, but cause all of a sudden I'm open to it because I'm listening to you and going, well, no, wait, she's not just going woo when someone comes in to give you a hundred dollars and then saying, I tell you this, you're obviously working very hard to make this happen. So why should you believe? And she it? just froze your screen, Suzanne. <laughs> for mine. <laughs> for mine. <laughs> uh, so first I'd say, um, for what I do, my first disclaimer is you don't need to believe. Uh, I don't believe <laughs> that you need to believe in any of this information to get something off wow. of it if that makes sense uh belief yeah. kind of runs into the idea of something dogmatic where i say astrology is true what i will say is if you can understand some concept between the different things i do which i know there's several of them astrology mediumship clairvoyance but that there's some kind of a concept in the hour, if you were my client, I'd say, of some kind of reflexive as above, so below concept or a reflexive quality of mirroring, if that makes sense. That I have an ability as a pattern reader, which might appeal to your left brain a little bit more. Yeah, like I can read patterns of energy, of frequencies. Of okay. Information. And um, if we're talking astrology, the moment you're born, the moment you popped out, if somebody took a photo, right, when you popped out a mom, you know, and we took a picture of the stars and everything up there, that is a blueprint. It doesn't mean that you can't change it, but it's a nice blueprint of some information about you because we do live in a world that's reflexive to those planets because we decide those planets are up there. I mean, we all know that- we I have a question about that yeah. then. What, yeah. what if, I'm sorry, what if- like I thought, because they would always say, I thought astrology would stop when every birth became cesarean, because it's like, you can hold the kid in until you have a cancer. You know what I mean? You can hold the kid in. I need a Scorpio. I mean, <laughs> right? People do do that. They do. So that, that goes to another belief. And again, to me, it doesn't oh, to, give the, <laughs> to give the information in a reading, I wouldn't need you to believe that. But if you want to hear the, the viewpoint, just like an Enneagram or birth order or any kind of consulting, what I say is that if we can kind of agree on the idea that you're born when the fuck you want to be born. So whether, you know, I was induced, I didn't, I don't even believe my birthday is my birthday half the time, but I do live with that imprint. Just like, maybe I don't believe I'm, you know, a female the way other people do, but I was born with at least a reflection on that. I mean, that's not the best example, but I get it. Does that make sense? So, so yeah, does, those though. are yeah, great questions about astrology. You know, what if I was induced? What if my parents and a lot of them do? I don't want this. I want this. But if you believe that each being is like a beam of light, let's just say all of us, we are some unique, whatever your thing is, if it's religious, yeah, you know, you have one spark of something even in the sea of all, then that spark, if you, if you can have the, the trust, faith, whatever your word is, that you do have a unique signature, then Maybe you can believe that that uniqueness in your signature could manipulate a cesarean <laughs> or be born when you want to be born, or at least that society is going to see you as that picture. So I got interested in astrology when I started seeing, and this might make sense, um, and interrupt me if you want. <laughs> But I started noticing- but You don't have to give her permission for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Naturally. Okay. That, that the <laughs> less someone believed in astrology, all right? You know, like I get clients, like the wife sends, I, I, I cannot tell you how often, they send a husband, you know, 
I mostly have like CEOs and things, which is funny, but they come in like, oh, you know, like, well, you know, fuck, you know, I guess I'll do, I'll get laid if I do this, you know, right. so they come and the less, the less that they have any interest, the more predictive I can be for them. And mm -hmm. like, it's fantastically, I'm, I'm a fantastic prognosticator for their business, for their money, for what's going on. And so I got interested in that. My skeptical side went, why? And I started to look at it and I thought, well, if you think of like incarnating like pie, like, you know, the symbol pie, when we're born, when we plop out, we become density, right? Like I have a body, you know, here's my arm. And when we do that, like a tree, we're, we're, we're dealing with density. Like I do have to make some money to put gas in my car, even if I fly out, you know, I need to eat these things that keep us in a body here, this, this incarnation. When we come down, we come down like this, a spiral into the earth, right? So people that don't believe tend to be more into the density, external 3D picture, if that makes sense. They don't do that woo-woo stuff. Let's talk. Probably, okay. So as they're like that, the predictiveness of this <laughs> blueprint, <laughs> when you've popped out of mom's vagina or stomach or whatever that'll happen, uh, that blueprint becomes very accurate because it's a it's a blueprint of density. Does that make some sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when people like a picture, a picture of what I'm now reflecting, what'd you say? I didn't hear. I was saying. So do you mean like a yeah a blueprint for the density? You mean like a picture of what I'm now reflecting that yeah, I'm here in yeah, this body? Like the sun is that is here, okay. the moon is here, your personality looks like this, you're sexual like this. I mean, you know, generically. But when people are interested in something spiritual, again, they don't have to just love astrology, but they want to evolve. And I don't mean that like hierarchy, but mm -hmm. evolve or change or grow that does this, right? Uh, whatever modality, then pi, like, see, I get it, you know, it starts to go like this, like we start to go up, right? We'll call it all religions, all, all belief systems. We'll talk about enlightenment or when you meditate or, you know, we uplift, we get out of our, you know, fear mind or 3D mind, you know, whatever your thing is. And so when you observe your blueprint, I believe what happens is like the observer effect, like in science. So now you're working with your blueprint. And remember, it's a blueprint. Even, even people that don't believe in it call astrology a blueprint. And so you're like, fuck this sort of, you know, <laughs> I see this predisposition in whatever way I'm interpreting it. And I want to, you know, play with it like clay. And so those people get just as much out of a reading, but they evolve more. So, so <laughs> out of the density of that blueprint. So I believe in supreme free will. There's no, there's no thing in my belief system of I'm telling you this and that's who you are. You know, does that okay, make I, I, Oh, yeah. sorry. Awesome. I was yes, wondering. <laughs> okay. I was wondering, um, Amadeus, if you're going to talk about past lives at all. Sure. I would, I'm really interested in that, yeah. but, but I don't know. Can I ask a question though? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Amadeus, if yeah. someone is born, mm -hmm. I mean, so this astrology, because it's the time and the place. Uh -huh. And so everything's unique. So there's, so technically there should be no two people exactly like, unless you're born at the same place at the exact same time. So mm -hmm. if there are two people, that mirror exactly the time and the place. And I'm sure there's other things, but just right now, time and place. Like twins? Like, no, what? twins don't come out at the same They're time. There's always time. at some yeah. time. Gotcha. But I'm talking, yeah. that's what I thought about first. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, that, that's wrong. So those two people that are the same exact astrological mm -hmm. sign with the exact mm -hmm. same astrological mm -hmm. chart, are they the same, like not the same person, but are like, are, will they in life mirror the, each other a great question um some people say that no charts replicated like what you know it's like 2400 years due to 9,000 permutations of mathematics mm -hmm. so let me just first say that but but let's just say we've got our closest even if it's no one tiny little thing then i would say yes i i would say mathematically because here it is pretty math <laughs> sure. i'd say those people we would find some very interesting things like things nobody even knew about them or where they could do, they could fill out a whole sheet and they'd probably hit most of it. However, 
there's other modalities. Astrology is not the only thing in the world, and there is something called nurture. <laughs> so the combination of nurture and nature, you know, I, a lot of therapists send me their clients. A lot of psychiatrists do quietly, and and it it melds well because they're dealing with a lot of nurture, and then they get stuck. And, you know, and then we're going to go to nature, let's say. So, yeah, if they were in the same, see, I, I have never heard of a case of the same family, the same place, the same thing at the same moment. You know, I mean, you know, I can't say, uh, you know, there isn't something, but otherwise, even if it was the same family, but, you know, not same family, but same town, it would be somewhere else with different, you know, different placements. And then nurture would be important. Right. You know? And try, even if you look at like biological twins that are even they're born time different, they would physiologically not necessarily come out identical. Mm -hmm. Might right. be you know into into or really athletically inclined, and the other isn't, or or what have you. But but is that you and Debbie, Jenny? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, <laughs> no, um, she's I, I am. We're not at the same time. Actually. I know. She's, I'm we're sorry. not really the athlete, Jenny. It really, you know. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> you know your heels, the collection you have. <laughs> the yeah, she's quite oh. the picture now. So. <laughs> <laughs> So now, you know, um, I, sorry, I interrupted, Mara. So if we can talk about past life, uh, definitely. So when I, yeah, yeah. Um, so when I was talking about that south node in astrology, not to just talk astrology, but astrology is really fun when it comes to past lives. Uh, that south node has so much to do with past lives you would have had, and I've never really actually seen it be wrong. And again, you don't have to believe; just these knowings. It tells you a lot about, you know, like if you have a Virgo south node, let's just say, whether you're a Virgo or not, that would be different than a Virgo, okay? It would just really right off the bat have this knowingness of past lives that you've had being a scientist or an analyst or some kind of, you know, left brain thinking, uh, detail oriented, a healer, the healer axis, a doctor, having to use logic to make decisions for your survival and your whole world would be going somewhere else in this incarnation. So it would get uncomfortable at a certain point. Hmm. Um, so astrology will tell a lot about some of those past lives, but in terms of past lives in general, I, I would say that probably that is one of the biggest reasons, unknowingly, I got into some of this stuff because from the time I was born, mm -hmm. I knew it, well, that wasn't my birthday and nobody told me I was induced till I was 35 <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> as an astrologer. Yeah. Nice. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I was the only kid that didn't like my birthday. And I, this is funny on this show, it isn't usually this funny, uh, because I was exceedingly straight uh, at that point. And I knew I was a boy, and I knew that I had to wear button flies, and I'm still grossly uncomfortable if I'm not wearing button fly pants. I mean, you all don't know that, because I also have vanity, because I'm a Libra, and I, I don't, there's just not a lot of good ones out right now. But I actually went to see the first past life person I ever went to, because I was like, what is this, you know, with all the buttons? And so... I'm, I'm telling you sort of my, some of my stories about past lives, but what are they, are you going to share life. what they said to you? Oh, sure. And I, and I already knew. So sure. I mean, it's a, kind of a long story. I, I went to this person because I'd gone to that first psychic and another person and all these people, I told you people would run up to me for years. You have a halo, you have this thing, just, just stuff that I went, okay. You know, and I was taking my mom to that astrologer. I wasn't doing astrology yet. And uh, she never had a reading in Santa Monica. And I was really ill in those days. So it was a big deal. I went to the Main Street Starbucks. And this woman walked up to me, did not know me, and said, uh, we've been looking for you. And I went, huh? You know? And <laughs> she said, we've been looking for you. How do you feel about the magic flute? And I know my name's Amadeus, which... I has to do with Mozart. If any of you know, the magic flute mm -hmm. is something he wrote. So I was thinking this woman knows me. No, she doesn't, you know. So it's a long story to answer your question. I have long stories. But um, this woman was so convinced I was part of the Mozart family and they've been collecting them. She told me I had to go to this woman named Biddy, Betty B. Binder, who was the past life president, like, of, you know, like the biggest past life person, I guess. Well, of course I don't go. Uh, I talked to some people uh, that are in the family and they all get emotional and they want to meet me because I'm, you know, a reincarnated Mozart's son is what they think, which resonates. Okay. And I do have something with that for sure with the Mozart thing, but 
I had it happen again, two more times. You got to go see Betty B. Bender. And so I finally fucking went to see Betty B. Bender. <laughs> and uh, I went to see her and she said, I mean, this is like seven years, six years later. And I go and I sit and I want to talk about the buttons. So I'm glad I told you all about that. <laughs> I want buttons on my pants. I, I, I was a kid. I hate tennis shoes. You probably know, Jenny. I always am in black boots, no matter what. You know, I just like, I have to, I have to wear that. And she said, I don't, I don't care. You, we want to talk about the Mozart thing. So we had this little thing. She told me I'm the most psychic, another one of those crazy things. But basically what was unearthed and she didn't do it was something that I actually had always known. So I'd encourage any of you, if you, even if you don't believe in it, if you have these knowings, these predilections, like for, for things that kind of don't make sense to, to write about them. And I'm sorry, I'm going on, but I, uh, for me, I, I had so many knowings that I really realized I always knew. And I, I was like a Native American chief's son. And I know because I when I was five, I spent a whole summer talking a Native American dialect. That's what I did for fun. You know, and I'm like, okay. And um, I saw that one. And I jumped off a cliff because I didn't want to do this political stuff uh, that I was going to have to do if I inherited that, you know, uh, kingdom. And I've had a bunch of Native American ones. And then I have had a bunch of Greek ones. And, you know, but these get these get verified by other people telling me too when I'm not asking, you know, at different times. But um, I'm always a male in them. <laughs> so yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do, does it does knowing that you've had past lives and quite a lot of them, um yeah, does that them. make it does that change or influence the way you feel about death and what's gonna mm -hmm. happen when your life and in this realm? That's a great question. Well, I haven't, since I was born and knowing, and I always said I was going to be immortal, which makes no sense in a non-religious family. So I don't really spend a lot of time. I, in fact, I met a girlfriend, I was reading a book and she's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm working on my mortality. And I tell my mom that too. <laughs> so I don't spend, a, and again, without the religious background, heaven, hell, and death, I don't spend time, but I'm a human, you know, and I face death, you know, as we before uh several times uh, really close and haven't wanted to die but um it does make it more comfortable i don't worry like this is the end of something but i really am i mean i'll just out myself i really am still working on the idea that i can uh i truly believe that i believe this that we can get out of the cycle of death because it doesn't make any sense like age and gender didn't i used to tell everybody this and now it's like oh Oh, that's interesting. I, I tell Jill Soloway, who's not Joey, I'd say gender makes no sense in 1992. <laughs> makes no sense. And I love it. And I'm like, yes. So, so you, I don't know. There's a lot of possibility for change. So anyways, to answer your question, um, it does make my relationship with death different, but I am human. And there's a fear, you know, especially from a lot of deaths. I remember, I remember a lot of deaths. I remember, oh, in your past life? Yes. A lot oh. of deaths not not nice at all i you know a lot of this a lot of witch a lot of hanging a lot of yeah oh no so, so, but how long like for example a past life session i mean did you find this out in one session because it's a really long session or is it like a, a series of times when you go to find out you know yeah. different things i mean I, I mean like i can't imagine it's like a seven hour session you know right. that's a great question um i'd say that uh some people just would go once and find you know one past life I honestly just went once. She wanted me to come back, but it tipped off for me because I was already doing that stuff. I just wasn't doing it. And really the bulk of what I, you know, I just got back from Atlanta. I, I think I told you that. And I spend the bulk of my time in the last uh, several years, I channel uh, people from the civil war and the revolutionary war. And I hear them and I write them their, what they're saying to me out. I don't read it. I send it to the heads of history at Harvard, BU, all over the country. Then I go and I find the graves and those people mm -hmm. exist. So I really spend Mara, a great deal of my life dealing with other people's past lives and then finding those, <laughs> finding them. So I haven't been as much into mine, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. of late. And I so don't, it seems like they just get, they can intrude or like they can just come yes. the, yeah, like your, your life, how do you balance that energy and keep your boundaries then if you've got all these interferences coming in at random times? Um, it's, I'd say it's, it's, it's my biggest challenge and it's not, it's not my other past life. So I'll probably leave the show going, maybe it is, you know, <laughs> but maybe, maybe it's just, God damn it. If I could just like, you know, get over the button flies that I can't have, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, 
like not helping my life. Um, but, um, but the other ones, yeah, you know, somebody wise told me this, a friend, a dear friend. Now I actually met in my clairvoyant class and I, you know, I just, I, I, if you gave me a pen, I would write these people now. If you, if you asked me to write a song, I'd write it now. I, I, I don't mean that with ego. It's just a, it's just a thing I can do channel. And they're all there. And I was, I didn't feel overwhelmed, but they're all there. And how am I going to have life? Like, like you said, they, like, how am I going to, how am I even going to go, you know, take pleasure in wine? And she said the smartest thing. So I'll say this, if anybody's listening, uh, my, it's my friend, Kathleen, I just stays with me visually. She said, Hey, you know, talking to my Virgo probably because I have a lot of Virgo. Um, they can all be there. Don't worry. You know, I'm not going to shit out this past life or this one or this song or that thing. And you don't have to prioritize because I was, uh, you know, just tell them all since you do that for fuck's sake, you know, tell them all that you see them. Hello. You know, and that they, that, you know, that you'll call them, you know, one by one as you want them and need them. And so when, when I think about it and it does get overwhelming, I do remember that image, like they're all there. I'm not going to lose one, or I'm not going to choose the, the voice that, you know, I, I speak for people that are dead and disembodied and get their voices out. And so there can be a lot of pressure I could put on myself to get the, the voice, you know, the one that needs to be here now. So everybody you're watching between the sheets here on. Yeah, I forgot. United Broadcasting. I'm like so involved in the conversation. It's like, oh, promo time. I'm United Broadcasting Network. I have a few people saying that they want to call in, but they they don't have the balls or whatever. But you know what, people, you know, we're listening, we're learning. Call in. We make time for you. You know, no, no question is stupid. No question's dumb. It's all about learning. And uh, 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. Three, three, five, five, so what's clairvoyance? Yeah. What is it? Yeah, great, great question. Again, semantics took me forever to find my own, uh, you know, understandings. So since I did take French, I, I'd say that that uh, that works well for me. Claire is like clairvoyant seeing. So clairvoyance for me, and I will tell you that some people clairvoyance will have different, slightly different interpretations. And Cheryl definitely tell me, you know. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. But I used to. I was in a clairvoyant class, telling my clairvoyant teacher I wasn't clairvoyant you know, but I was psychic and I was this and Claire audience. I was this. And she just said, she literally said, you asshole, you told me that you see a movie from the beginning of, you know, the first word you write and you can see it like what's wrong with you. So sometimes we, we, we don't give ourselves permission to own these things. I, I know I just made a little uh, segue, but clairvoyance is clear sight. And for me, it's not as important whether it's an actual image. And I think that's what people wonder. Oh, I don't have an image. Like there's Suzanne. She just floated into my room over here. Mm. Versus here's Suzanne as a thought. And then the image comes. Oh. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. it, but it's seeing. It's clear sight. It's seeing things. And then, so, yeah. just... Go ahead, Cheryl. Sorry, Sorry, Sorry Cheryl. That's okay. Can I add that? Um... Yes, that, you know, a lot of people are clairvoyant, but they don't realize they are just because mm -hmm. they don't know what, what it looks like to them. Like, what does it look like? What does it feel like to be psychic? And so people like Amadeus and myself, you know, we point it out to them or we coach them or we help them understand, you know, through opening up all of our senses. So it's amazing that whether it's an image or a moving picture or whether it's in the mind's eye or you know, objectively out in the room, it's all clairvoyance. Yes. So it's really not just one thing, right? It's, it can be many things. I have a, um, on the, on the, I'm look, I'm watching the show on my tablet and someone wrote in, hello, Amadeus. I was born July 20th. Her name is Ciara Ciabara um, with special gifts, seeing spirit and knowledge of the other side. My children have the gifts also. Do you find it hard to live in different worlds? How do you teach your children that it's normal to be given a psychic gift? Hmm, that's a beautiful question. Um, I will admit that at times I've had it dif had difficulty. A Sierra, is that what her name was? Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, living in different worlds. Mostly for me, it's not all the multi-dimensions. I get teased sometimes. I like to fly. I mean, fly, fly, fly. Far, far out. But again, being in the body, like doing body stuff, because I am here. 
So sometimes like coming through, uh, you know, a time warp or, you know, what are the, I don't watch sci-fi, you know, the, the whole, <laughs> what is it on one of those shows? You go through those warps, uh, you know, if you're bucking to come back down to earth. Um, so one thing I've learned is to be more gentle with myself about that, that that's okay. I mean, it's like that on an airplane you know, instead of judging that, it's okay for it not to feel comfortable is what I was going to say. Discomfort isn't a sign of something being off. And I would tell children that it would help me to know that. And that there are many, many things in our world that we don't see in a way uh, mm -hmm. that the external world will tell us or that we can feel and see. There's more than what meets the eye or the ears. And I think that's becoming more of a known thing in our world, or at least an idea. And that they're safe. I think the biggest thing I get is I always oh, knew those things when I was little as a child, but um, I was told it was evil or or there was bad things were going to come and get me. So if you can tell your children, you know, this is a beautiful gift, you know, like like music. It's a frequency. It's like having having a, a tune to beautiful music or, or drawing or, you know, painting or something. But that nothing's going to hurt them. And if you know some skills, it sounds like you know what you're doing uh, with this. Just just tell them that they have permission to say no to an energy, you know, that in, and that's okay. Do you think to, everybody has special gifts? I'm sorry, Cheryl. No, I, I was, no. I'm listening. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, yes. I mean, maybe let's just get rid of uh, the word special for the sake of the answer. I think everybody... I think everybody's an artist. I think everybody's an expressor. I think everybody is, that's just who I am. I think everybody has the ability to do anything. I do believe that that in our incarnation or clunky 3D stuff, maybe like a, a radio dial, we're born and the astrology chart does help with that a little, a little predisposed to where the lever was on a, on a, on a radio, you know? And then if you work with it, like I've worked, Cheryl, I'm sure you have with the clairvoyance, it's a muscle, you know, you, you work with it. We are, this whole show, I'm talking about what I do, what I prepare and learning my lexicon. So, but I believe everybody has that. I may be predisposed, predisposed, or possessed at the moment, uh, <laughs> to, to read the energy. And then I chose to work with it and uh, augment it. So yes, I believe every single person I'm looking at here has ability to different, just like Cheryl said so beautifully, to, to expanding their sense of understanding of their senses and information and how and what it's telling them. I'm surprised that Tristan is not um, Rock, Roxanne. Roxanne, sorry. Roxanne. She does have two names, three maybe. Um, I, you're quiet and I see, I know you're still working. Um, so you're checking your emails and stuff, but what i mean you have a lot you usually have a lot to say but we make fun of her because her first question is what's your sign what's your sign but see, oh sorry go ahead, Karen. So, go ahead. So, so for me what really matters to me um of course the sun sign matters but for me it's going to be more uh the venus the moon and the mercury mm -hmm. because i am an aries and i'm a triple aries I mean, quadruple Aries. How could I make that mistake? More, more, That's more two perfect. Aries too much. That's more it. more yeah. perfect, in my opinion. Um, is your Venus in Aries, though? That's what I want to think. It's in Aries. So Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Venus are in Aries. So I, I could see think, what you get. I mean, that's nice. Like yeah. the way you love is the way you talk, and people aren't going, well, what in the hell's going on? She said this, she loves, like, Ugh, you know. Right. And so, you know, I, at, at the end of uh, last year, I was dating in Aries. And when I did the chart, I saw, oh, no, the Mercury and the Venus is it's in Pisces. It's just never going to work. And it was nothing but frustration on my end because you're right, Amadeus. It's like, um, but, but, but Roxanne, do you, okay, you said it wasn't working. Um, but is that because you are familiar with the astrology, you looked at the signs, you looked at the information, and maybe you had a predisposition in determining that this was not going to work right off the bat. How much, how much weight do you put in on making decisions based on that? I actually used to make all the decisions based on that, and I stopped. 
I, I, I learned how to be really open-minded to the person, uh, really take in the signs of the, the parents that raised them because I know that affects them as well. Um, so I was very open-minded to the, to dating the Aries, even though I'm like, mm, this probably isn't going to work, but let me try. And sure enough, the Pisces came out with the avoidance, the non-communication and, you know, uh, for, uh, Aries and all those, it just, it doesn't work because it's true with me. It's like you, Gan, what you see is what you get. You know, with us, like what you said, Amadeus, we don't, so whoever dates us doesn't have to wonder, oh, wh what does she really mean? What does she really want? What is she really up to? You don't. We're going to be just open, honest, and blunt. Look, I'm a mystery to everybody. They don't get, they, 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 most people, like 50% get me and 50% don't. I mean, I'm a Capricorn. I mean, I don't know why I, I didn't pull out What's my card. Rising? I should have. Huh? What's your rising? Um, Leo. Mm. Oh, of course. Here you are. <laughs> Leo. And my moon is in Gemini, but I, I mean, the other, I mean, like I said, I, did, I should have pulled out my chart, but I didn't. But, you know, most people, like, either they get me or they don't. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, and I'm okay with that. I mean, I've been called odd, eccentric, unique. Um, but you know what? I actually like being called that. I hate to be normal. I hate to be normal. Normal's boring. Um, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, so it's a matter of, I think, astrology, I think if it's done properly and you get guidance from it, you know, and, and someone who knows about it tells you, but, you know, I think people who read the thing in the morning paper, well, is there a morning paper anymore? I don't know. Right. <laughs> but I mean, you know, oh, if you're Capricorn, this is what's going on today. And it's like, that has told that like that, I think personally, what gives astrology sort of a bad name because people think, it's just, that's all it is. So, you know, and, and reading it, you know, as a kid, I would go, well, if I'm a Capricorn and that person's a Capricorn, then we're the same. How can that be? Yeah. Can that be? And it didn't make sense. So yeah. I have your chart right here. What do you, what do you want to learn? To know from it? What's okay. What's important Amadeus? What's the, what, what's the, oh, uh, well, what's her rising? Her rising is Leo. Okay. And where, uh, where is her son? What house? Her son is in the sixth house direct. And where's her Venus? Her Venus is in Aquarius, end of sixth house direct. Yeah, end of sixth house and then her Mars. Her Mars is in Capricorn, in sixth house direct. Does she have anything in the eighth house? Uh, or no. fourth? Uh, or fourth? fourth house, she has Neptune and Scorpio. Okay, I was looking for the Scorpio. <laughs> um, why <laughs> i was looking for it because and normally i would have been able to ping that but 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 it's fun you, you you're right you're interesting in that sense i mean you already are from your different signs so you know um i mean everybody is but it, how one's interesting is you know is different um obviously i mean what makes that happen in a chart uh you know neptune and scorpio that's you know i i think i have it you know a bunch of people do but um, because that mysteriousness, I was trying to figure out where, uh, where that was going besides just, you know, that you have very different kinds of signs that make people, people want a box, you know, you're this, you're that, and you, you just, your sun rising and moon don't have that, you know, together, which who cares? That's great. Awesome. But, uh, but yeah, that Neptune, if, the, if that's it in Scorpio would have to be in the water, then <laughs> you have to have, to have a little more water there. So, um, yeah, no, Hey, I, I just wanted to pop in really quick. Suzanne has to jump. Okay. Uh, Suzanne, where can people find you? Is it SuzanneWestonHuffer.com? Oh, I think it's at SuzanneW.com because I'm old enough to have gotten SuzanneW.com. I know. <laughs> 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 um, it's amazing. Just or you killed someone. Internet. <laughs> Do you have any shows coming up really quick? I don't know. I'm going to be in Provincetown. I don't know. Nobody knows right now. We're just, we're all like, maybe that'll happen. I think it's going to, everything's going <laughs> yeah. to open up. Well, um, I just want to say, Amadeus, I want to get my chart done or something. Cause oh. I don't even know what any of that stuff you just talked about is. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to, we will find one another. Uh, yes, I have your number somewhere, but I don't, who knows? So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm easy to find. Yeah, Suzanne W. I'm so sorry. I love you all. I have to go. Thanks I told people. Love you too. Thanks for coming uh, on, Suzanne. Have fun uh, in Eureka. Yeah, love Eureka. Eureka. <laughs> I love that place. Don't stalk her if you're in Eureka. Right. <laughs> <laughs>
So, no, I mean, so, you know, like, thanks for doing, I mean, I actually do want to get a reading with you, many, on everything, like one, two, three. So I, everything you do, I want to check, 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 and check. Um, but so, um, so getting back to like, like charts and clairvoyance, I mean, so when people come to you, like Cheryl, like Cheryl, Cheryl, you're primarily a medium, correct? Yes, I'm a medium. So I help people connect with their loved ones on the other side. That's, that's primarily what I do. And then I do psychic work where people may have questions at crossroads, you know, or they're feeling stuck or wanting to move or relationships or health concerns. Right. So I use my mediumistic or psychic abilities. I I'm mostly into intuiting, right? I'm an intuitive. So yeah. And I do the hour and it, it flies by it. I mean, you know, you know, that Amadeus, when you're in the energy and it's just flowing, it's just endless really. Nothing. Yeah. I never know. I know what time it is. <laughs> and, you know, you know, Amadeus, I am a cesarean, a C-section. My mom wasn't supposed to have any other kids. Because she had a, a almost side with my brother. So she decided to have a, a baby girl seven mm -hmm. years later, C-section. And so I always joke around with my mom and I said, the only thing you did right in your entire lifetime was make me be born two hours and one minute on March 21st because <laughs> I missed Pisces by two hours and one minute. So um, I joke around with her because I, I give her a hard time with a, about how I was raised, but I am I am so grateful. I'm an Aries, I just am. I have Pisces all in my family and don't get me wrong, it's not like I hate Pisces, I just don't want to date them. Look, I was raised by two Geminis, please. Oh, oh no, I was, ra I was raised by a cancer mom and a Scorpio father and my wretched uh, brother, that's a Pisces. Mm -hmm. And and I'm just so grateful that uh, my mom uh, did the C-section at two hours and one minute. I must have just been telling my mom, no, 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 no. Okay, now you go. Take ownership of that uh, decision out there. Oh, I take ownership of it. I, I must have been <laughs> mentally, <Aaron. laughs> mentally manipulating my mom. Not come in Hang unless. tight, <laughs> Hang oh, tight baby. Hang tight. Time. So, Amadeus, you were saying you like to, you went to the clairvoyance classes and you've done stuff. So, if someone actually feels they have an ability. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I didn't know you people went to classes for this. You know what I mean? So like if someone has an ability, not to be scared of it, of course, but how would you say, how would you direct them if they were asking for advice on how to sort of bring it out so they feel comfortable? You know, because I also, I mean, James Von Prague, I mean, I, I worked on the show Ghost Whisperer. So I, I've, I've met him often and, you know, his thing, you know, was, you know, people like they just come to you. Like, do they just come to you, Cheryl? And uh, like, you could be just sitting there and then someone comes to you and, and it, like, can you not say not now? Or do you have to deliver that message? I mean, mm -hmm. this is a are mumble. You me or are you asking Cheryl? You, I'm asking you. Um, uh, well, great question. I've, I've learned some boundaries on it. People do come to me. People came to me today. That's why I was giving the reading. I, I mean, I, sometimes I'm just working as a medium for months, you know, uh, I just, because I know the astrology, I'll do it, but I'm, you know, sometimes just a medium, um, not just, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, people come to me, people come to me all the time. And sometimes I do feel like today I went a certain place. It was based, I'm glad I see your face, Miss McNulty, because I, this guy, his birthday was August 3rd and I pattern matching the way my energy works. I knew you were coming on. And I knew why would I only know your birthday, you know? And so I knew I had to give this message about, I knew somebody had died and uh, yeah. So uh, that's what I was doing. And so when I know I, do, I don't question it, it's very clear for me on that. When I am supposed to speak, that's what I was doing in Atlanta. We call it my friends that are close to me. We call it my ministry. I just, you know, and now that's the, when I am just sort of wandering around and I just, I have to say things and that's not in a reading, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and then if I have a reading and somebody comes and they, oh, I don't want, I don't want any of that medium stuff. Cause I don't know how many people come to me generally. I mean, I, I just word of mouth, I, it, it's just a blank slate. So sometimes they'll say, oh, I heard you're a medium while they're with me. I don't want to hear about it. And then, you know, I, I'm going to respect that. Um, but you know, I'm sure Cheryl, you'll probably know there's a few times though, where it's just, you know, overriding of, you know, can I try to at least say this one thing? I mean, because really crazy shit will happen, you know, right. um, right. you know, they, they will, uh, yeah. 
No, go ahead, Cheryl. I, I was going to say that, you know, uh, you know, we live in the spirit world, you know, we live in their world, you know, and so it's very much available to you and I, it's, it's our first uh, sense, so to speak. It's our very natural. So when we do feel the spirit world, we always have a choice. We have a choice whether we want to deliver that message or, you know, whether we want to maybe just politely ask the person if they would like to receive a message, but you, you get that feeling really quickly if they're open to it or not. I mean, have you ever delivered, either of you, it doesn't matter who wants to answer, um, have you ever like been given a message to deliver to someone and it's either been, it's like not a nice, it's not a nice message. I mean, how do you deal with like the reception of the messages that you're getting to the people if it's something that is something out of the blue and maybe not so nice? Um, oh, I guess I'll jump in since I said up. Yeah. I, 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 maybe it's, maybe it's the way I'm made. Maybe it's the decisions I've made as, as clairvoyant medium person, but I've really never had a bad experience in the message I deliver. I've had people that are apprehensive. Um, but you, you know, it sounds sort of, you know, wooey, whatever cliche, but you, you, you do have confirmation from guides and looking <laughs> and, and whether it's okay. And somebody wants a message even from themselves, not just verbally, but, but out there. Um, so if I'm giving a message about something and I don't believe in black and white and good and evil and death is bad and this isn't. And so I don't really attract people that, uh, people who want information, they get the information they want is what I'd say. So I don't, I don't have one instance, I mean, ever of telling somebody anything where they walked away and said, <gasps> that was bad. And that doesn't mean I haven't discussed, you know, some, some things, you know, about maybe not travel here relationships, abuse, meth, death, drugs, you know. Have you ever tried to read somebody and you just, you just weren't getting anything? Yes. There's some people that don't want to be read. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and, and then there's a code of ethics, which I'm sure you, you, you know, whatever way you'd say, you don't, I, I mean, I'm not going to push behind that, you know. Um, a lot of people like to come talk about black magic with me and, you know, I, I that's not what I'm doing, you know, so. Um, and I would put that in that. If I'm going to circumnavigate uh, a person who does not want to be read, and you know, you do it enough, you start to realize if somebody doesn't want to be read, they don't want to be read, and that's not that's not accurate for me. That is not an integrous in, in my ethical system. And I'm talking disembodied, like right. you know, just no, you know. Mark. And it's surprising to people sometimes. They come and they want this message from this person, they don't tell you guilty until proven innocent, sort of, you know, <laughs> and, and, and another being wants to come in. I'm sure you know that, <laughs> Cheryl. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's, there is a, there's a gentleness you, you take with people through that journey of, I know you wanted, you know, dad who really doesn't want to be read. Not that they told you the truth, you right. know, but, but your aunt does. And, you know, you follow that trail and it always opens up to what it wants to be. I'm not saying that with any kind of, uh, lightness I mean that from the depths of my heart it will always be what is supposed to be and that may open them up to dad grandma right. Kang or the aunt Mara yeah um how do you were you just born with a sense of uh trusting whatever messages you're getting because do you ever go into self-doubt and like my problem when I tried when I, sometimes when I get clairvoyant when I get you know the psychic ability. Mm -hmm. um, I've been right. But then there's sometimes where, how do you differentiate between, you know what I'm saying, your logical voice that's going to second guess what you're hearing. And then your other voice that's like, doesn't even have to question it because it's right. so true. Right. Well, uh, so I'll answer that in sort of like three parts. One, for whatever reason, because believe me, there are things like tying a shoe or something I can't fucking figure out. <laughs> I, I just guess I was born with that or else I really would say I'm one of the most unlikely nurture wise to have ever ended up doing this. All right. So I always trusted in just, I just wrote stuff. I just did stuff. So I haven't had doubt. I mean, I'm not saying somewhere something, but I can't, I really, that, that, everything else probably shit show. That, <laughs> though, I just, you know, I've, I've had a clear channel. However, I do think about okay. it because, oh, I have it. Now I want to know why I have it, you know, and then help people. And I do teach people, you know, sometimes. So 
And again, that goes to like muscles, you know, you ha might have a natural ability with a forehand or something, you know, or do, how do I know what I'm doing? You know, and that's where I would use developing the muscle. Yes. Yeah. And it's muscle. It's okay. Anything else, like anything else, you know, and I think there's this, there's this idea that if one worked at something, whatever that means to you, that it's not real from movies, from whatever, like a bonk, you know, blah, <laughs> you know, and I'm not saying that I couldn't be dramatic and do that, but it's not my nature, you know, right. to, or, you know shits and giggles but 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 i want ethically that that i want to know what wires are there you know and to be in my body i need to know that because i i started as a medical intuitive because i feel people's things and i still do it i just can't just do that all the time so you know is it my elbow or is it yours is it am i feeling like fuzzed out today because you're you're feeling fuzzy in your head you know i needed to understand and that's again i hate to say words that meh, but sort of the discipline of doing it so I'm sure that I'm sure you have ac accurate information, but you're probably doing other things too. And, and, you know, uh, I would just say, you know, when I was trained, the only thing I was trained in was grounding. There was nothing that was whatsoever. It's it, look at Chris Cahill. Uh, she, she, if I hadn't met her because I was doing a psychic thing and I just said, okay, I'll finally go, you know, and it's grounding, putting two feet flat on the ground and grounding. That was my training. And that's so I know what I, what my messages are. Yes. I have to just ask one more thing. Sorry. Yeah, I, I had this experience once where I was at Starbucks mm -hmm. and this really cute guy came up and, and we were talking, we were sharing the same table and he looked like maybe kind of an actor type. And I don't know why, but I got this image of him shooting up a school. Mm -hmm like with the gun, like Columbine mm -hmm. and I didn't like it. I didn't know why I had that. What the hell? That's a specific mm -hmm. random thought. Mm -hmm. So I go back and I watch his reel and about halfway in, he's playing that part where he's shooting up a school. So I don't know like why that happened. Uh, how, how did I pick up on that? Like you had in a window to some information like Cheryl and I've been talking about. And if there's okay. no time and things aren't linear, that happens to me all the time. You know, I'll have a client, I'll say something, they'll call next day. Oh, I just got cast for this thing, but it wasn't, we weren't talking, that was the, the friend or something, you know, for a specific thing. So you, you were seeing something sort of not in probably what your brain thinks is a linear time loop. Like I didn't talk to him. How could I know that? Now I see it here. Um, but you were just picking up and oh, everything's, you know, everything's oh, all at once and you tuned in. Then as you learn okay. your, your skills, then you might have learned for yourself, okay, do I have a way that I know that that was, for me, a, a literal image? And do I want to send out some, like, out to guides or whatever you're into or prayer, whatever your thing is, like, let's, you know, do this uh, out there? Or am I maybe picking up what he read, you know? Do you think he could have sent me a thought on his reel? Like he could have been picturing it in his mind and then I kept the thought of it? Possible. It's possible. It's or weird. It's hard not to get freaked out when those type of things happen. I, I would say, I'd say if I could, if I could reframe it for you, I'd be just thrilled. I'd say, wow, like think of it like there's all this information as we know, everything's happening all at once. And for a moment, a light, you know, it gives me a chill thing, a light <laughs> You know, while you were there, maybe because you were standing and waiting, maybe there was a song, maybe there's a perfect storm of things that open your channel just a little bit more. Huh. Like, it's cute. Maybe he, he, maybe he was a Pisces. I happen to know Pisces. You know, and he was a little more, even if he didn't believe in it, you know, like sort of out there. So he started sending energy. Maybe he thought you were cute. That opens up a little sexual, sensual channel, even if it's this big. And through that, like, like film, like you stopped a, you stopped a, you know, a frame. And you saw it. I just say, yay. I take that as a validation. I have a skill. And I think when you're learning, uh, it gets confusing sometimes because I think that we will try to make a hierarchy in it of, oh, well, that was just that. So that's not, that's not like I predicted a death because you might think of a song and then you go somewhere. I mean, you know, and you hear it and people oh, run yeah. up, oh, isn't that weird? And I'd say, no, it's, it, that's lovely. You're tuning in. You're in. So you, you think that with time, there that it's it's not linear and so like i picked up on something in the future maybe that i ended up being right like before it happened because time is not linear is that yeah, what you mean yeah. yeah or everything's happening all at once so let's just say that um you know just like a microscope think of it like this everything's happening right but you're out here you don't see it and then you zoomed in and you saw you know the molecular structure of something 
It's there. It's all there to be seen in a sense. Hey, ladies, we have a caller and it'll be the last caller of the evening and then we'll find out and then we'll wind down because guess what? An hour, it's an hour and a half as <laughs> always. So um, let's take this caller, please. Hello, welcome to Between the Sheets. Hi. Who's on the line? What's your name, please? Uh, this is Joe Papadenitz. Oh, Joe, of course it is. It's Joe. I knew it was <laughs> Joe before Joe said it was Joe. There you go. <laughs> really? Oh, oh wow. Yes, That's cool. I did. Joe, okay. what is your question? Wow, that is cool. So I apologize if you've already, this is for Amadeus. Uh, I'm sorry, if, if you've already answered this, then just tell me. Um, I wasn't able to get well, on the whole on. thing Maybe tonight. Guess what it is, and we don't even have to say your answer. Question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so here's two questions. Um, I'm sure you've had out of body experiences, and I'm wondering how that would influence or confirm your belief in life after death. So that's one question. And the second one would be do you have a solid belief in life after death, or has it wavered from time to time? And what is it currently? Oh, gosh, such excellent questions. I love those. Um, so uh, on the first one, and if I got it right, because actually there's like, I'm in Santa Barbara and there's a wind alert and it sounds like uh, Dorothy's house is moving behind me. <laughs> it's like things are falling. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the first one, out of body experience. Um, I Yes, I have. I mean, I've been doing this and I, I wouldn't say I had this full on until I really had a full on. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. that did change things. Sometimes the experiential things change. You know, I have to say as much as I'm, I like to live in the land of, I don't need the experience. I can feel it. Um, that experience, you're, mm -hmm. you're, right, you're accurate, did, did change. Um, I wasn't raised with a belief of either any, anything, whether there's life or not after I just sort of have, I, I maybe, I don't, want to say I'm unique, but I've just always had a belief system of isness. I have no other way to put it. It's just my truth. And so I have never really con been concerned about, well, when I die, where do I go? Because everything seems alive to me, whether it's dead people, live people, animals, or this rocks, you know, I, so I don't want to, mm. like nice. yeah, yeah, I just do. I, 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 you know, I'll feel like a rock has the same as an animal you know it's just it's just the, the how I see things or feel things I'd say yeah so but yeah. the body experience yes did it you know first time I had it did help me and very much my stepfather who didn't believe in any of it and then died went to the white light sat on a pillow and you know strapped to a million tubes was like oh my god you know and having him explain his experience as a very lapsed catholic um yeah some of those things were fundamental and oh yeah there really is something about what people say that seems like a collective way of um uh verbalizing it right? Like of somewhere else, if you're not in your body. So yes, I have a belief system in that. I live with these people all the time. <laughs> I mean, they're, I live with a lot of dead people, a lot of friends, you know, that's who I write about. That's like, uh, gotta be so okay. nice. You yeah. probably just don't fear, you don't fear death in a, a way of like, that it means that you're, that you're not ever going to see that soul again. I feel like I do, but I, I honestly, and it's fun. Thank you guys for asking these questions because I learn, you know, I think sometimes maybe it's more from those memories of, of past lives and, and fear that I'm bringing into my body from it. I did have, I don't really have readings that often. I did have one about uh, something with the, the vaccine and uh, she's just a kinesiologist, not just, but she, she's intuitive, but really kinesiologist. And she just laughed at me. This was like a month ago. And she said, I've never seen anybody so not afraid of death. You're just afraid maybe nobody will be around. So it's funny you keep saying that, Mara, because I feel like you're picking up on what she said. Or so I feel like I am, but I think it's I think it's reverberations of things uh, from the past. So I so your second question was, uh, do I do I firmly believe in an afterlife, so to speak? Right? Am I correct? And and, and has it ever yeah, and has it ever wavered? Ah, if you had uh, in your life, you go, Oh God, I don't know anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Great, great question. Gosh, thank you so much uh, because it does make me think and learn. Um, I would say it's wavered, but I'm not sure in the way that you, that you think, I think I didn't really think about it <laughs> because I wasn't raised with that kind of concept. When you're not raised with it, I got to tell you, it's just not really there, you know, like a culture that doesn't have, what do you mean you weren't, what do you mean you weren't, I'm sorry. What do you mean you weren't raised with it? I wasn't raised with a religion. And I think a lot of the idea of an afterlife comes from some kind of spiritual or religious 
doctrine. Oh, okay. Don't gotcha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I literally, and I never had a parent, you know, I didn't have a role model around me. And I now see how unusual that was. Even friends, parents who spoke of afterlife or hell or heaven or, or, oh my God, what's going to happen when somebody dies? You know, my mom's since the day I was born, she loves to talk about the Neptune society in her ashes. And, you know, <laughs> she's a Scorpio. Very smart. Yeah. So, um, but where it's wavered, I'd say, is my understanding because I talked to all these people that are not embodied and they're, they're just as real. And part of my life mission is to make their voices heard. I mean, I, I, that's, that's, you know, my bio for other stuff is that I speak, you know, for people that didn't have a voice when they were embodied. And so they're just as real. So sometimes to me, the word afterlife doesn't really resonate for me because I, I, uh, again, yeah. I trying to cop out for you but i believe these things are all happening you know at the same time so i guess we go to do i believe when this body or somebody's body like this this you know density this this arm this you know <laughs> nose i have you yeah know, isn't here will i continue on and i don't think i've ever not believe that but i didn't even know i was believing it i i believe mm. yeah i mean i i can't i all my knowing is that Joe, the Joe, I do know you a little bit, the, the, the imprint of light that you are, that it's not, it cannot go away. And I'm not saying that from some spiritual book. It's just, it's just what my heart knows. Does that, did that answer? Yes. Yes. Thank you. If it wasn't. And that's pretty enough, much I'll... been your, your, you know, you know, it is, it's just pretty much been your entire life then, or, or, and I, again, I apologize if you've already said this, did it start oh, no. at a certain age or, or was it always been? No, although because I was almost dying for a couple of years, I did have to do some of the heavy lifting of looking at that stuff at a time. I, I'm sure I wouldn't. Okay. Um, like, whoa, you know, yeah. like, whoa. And it didn't make, you know, what is this thing? <laughs> what is this? I still, mm -hmm. like, what, how, you know? <laughs> so. Um, but, right, right. Yeah, I I do believe, though, that, that I do at this point, and you know, my beliefs change. So I want to use the word belief. I may say something different from my growth of understanding or experience later, mm -hmm. 10 years. But I do believe though, that there's some that. Uh, viability to you create your reality through thoughts. So I, I get asked sometimes by people that have been raised in very strict, I have a lot of strict religious people that come to me for whatever reason, you know, and, and they, they have very, very heavy things about everything we're talked about, you know, being dark and hell and even talking about it, where they're going or things they've done or they, you know, uh, there is no. My after. favorite place has always been purgatory. Yeah, purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> and you love it. <laughs> um, and if, some, if you ever tell somebody that that matrix of an idea isn't real for them, though, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, absolutely. So, yeah. It's their belief system. And that's where they are. Yeah. And I and, think, is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. And, and who am I? I'm still in a body to say that my belief system can supersede theirs that where their belief matrix, parallel reality, whatever you want to call it, takes them is not that interpretation of something. I know those, that's a I lot. I don't think I've ever heard that perspective before. I've ne I don't think I ever have heard that because usually people want to share knowledge and you're just going who am i to impose mine on them right yeah. well, if the, but if the world would actually come from that point of view you know i think the world in general would be a better place with people instead of like trying to ram down what they're oh, absolutely on other people so yes. you know yes. I mean, seriously yes. i mean that's sort of the way we all should strive to be and and there's wow. been ebbs and flows and waves and changes and and you know i cannot stand static people huh. cannot stand people that are just so set in their ways that are so immobile that i just i, I have no tolerance I, I will use the word tolerance for them i'm not judgmental i just choose for them not to be in my world um mm -hmm. it's just because it, 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 it there's change and growth and, and obviously we all go back to you know people don't like to change they would say they want to grow, but do they want to really go on the journey? But they really have to tackle some inside things and be vulnerable. And fear is the biggest um, hindrance to all of that. And I, that's why I like the spirituality of things, because in that realm, there really isn't 
there shouldn't be any fear. It's complete openness to just be able to receive and take in. And, you know, just because there's 700 people that are clairvoyants or psychic, and trust me, I've gone to my share. Um, there are some that I resonate with and some that I don't. But I will say that every experience of every person that has touched my life in that way and vice versa, um, I have... I have grown because of it mm -hmm. and some have made me just really exponentially mm -hmm. grown and some it's just a little dot, but it's enough mm -hmm. for me to sort of change my ideology. And, Cause I was raised Catholic, but I was mm -hmm. never a believer in Catholicism because I never believed. I, I don't believe in rules and I don't believe in finites. I never mm -hmm. believed in anything that was finite because it's impossible to be finite. Um, but on that note, I appreciate you calling Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you, Amadeus, for answering my questions and being so uh, open. Very, uh, very uh, enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thanks, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Are, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jenny's oh, that's right. Hey, Joe. Jenny. <laughs> hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hi, Joe. Hey, Suzanne. <laughs> so, ciao. Ciao. So Amadeus and winding up, because I'm going to close the show, um, you know, again, if you have any sort of insight to impart on people, um, sort of what is, what would your, what would you say to someone? What would you just say to someone, just how to live their life or how to proceed in this or just how to be? Uh, in general? In uh, general. Okay. <laughs> a pearl of wisdom. An now Amadeus that, pearl of wisdom. Yes, now that I've outed myself as I will not put my, any doctrine on somebody's doctrine. Um, I would say, it's, I'm going to keep it to the topic because I probably have a lot of things I would offer, you know, out. Just, uh, But to circle back to the idea that I don't have something everyone else does not have. Um, there's many, many different ways to express in this universe. There are many ways to create in this universe. There are many ways to heal in this universe. And it's okay to explore different ones. And there is no right or wrong in it. And I encourage people to follow some of those paths, uh, you know, whether that's clairvoyance, whether it's creating, playing an instrument you haven't done, there isn't a right or wrong in how you'll do it. And I feel like I, I feel like these tools of allowing oneself to explore, I'm going to call it creative expression in the different realms, uh, really brings a lot of joy and goodness to life. And we're going through, I'll leave with a very intense time, Ashton or whatever you don't even have to be into astrology just changes the name of the game i whether you're doing numerology whether you're doing enneagrams whether you're you know a thought leader right now for the first time in my life in this incarnation it used to be ch the idea of change sort of like ebb and flow like the ocean and then we'd sort of come back to somewhere we're in the wild west it's it's not going back you know in my in my uh view <laughs> from the mm -hmm. lens and so be comfortable with not knowing a goddamn thing. That, that's always been a helpful thing, but right now more than ever. And in not knowing a thing, like you so eloquently said, using some of those or exploring some of those spiritual realms that don't have finite this, that, you know, can be really helpful navigating the discomfort. Um, so I'd say, yeah, I encourage everyone to whatever interest they have in creating or anything, you know, they label spiritual or uh, intuitive. Everyone's into it. Everyone's has psychic abilities. There was some person that said to be spiritual, be spiritual, spiritual, philosophical, being deep is boring. And I thought that's not my person. That's not, my, <laughs> that's, that's so not my person. Um, but I mean, like the big takeaway, bottom line, people, don't be afraid to be Dora the Explorer. We all have it in us. Um, <laughs> so Amadeus, um, people can find you at IamAmadeus.com if they want to get a reading or they want to sort of have some time with you. Um, how is, is it on that website, how to reach you, or is there another way? Yeah, I remember I said there are some things that I <laughs> am not doing as well. I'm also on Instagram just as Amadeus. Uh, and I think there's some way to get a hold of me on that. Yeah, I don't use my website, but it is accurate information. <laughs> it is me. <laughs> uh, it is, it very is a pretty me. picture, by the way. Very ethereal. I loved it. Yeah, it was at uh, Upstate Michigan. I was in the <laughs> UP, uh, and I was on a hammock, and I went. <laughs> <laughs> 
so, so thank you, natural lighting, yeah. Um, so yes, uh, so I am Amadeus.com or Amadeus on Instagram, A-M-A-D-A-E-S. I really do want to thank you for coming on the show um, and sort of, you know, giving, it's fun because we have Cheryl, but mm -hmm. it's always, we have, we have Cheryl, but it's yeah, always yeah, wonderful. But to yeah. get someone else on because Amazing. you know not every single person that does it is a cookie cutter so it was beautiful to hear sort of your how how you how you've come to be who you are um and and that thank you for sharing and being open and vulnerable and honest and, and that's um as, as you and i talked i mean that's that's the pillar to be and i think to have a gift whether you have a gift or not or whether you explore that gift with it we all have a certain gift um but you know, it's really about being, it's the openness, the openness to receive and to give. And it's a genuine person. So find, find your tribe, you know, uh, find your people. Um, you know, like Mara, when you were saying it's weird, please take that out of your language because it's not weird. It's beautiful that you have that ability. It's yes. scary and weird because you're not familiar with yes. it, but it it's doesn't make unknown, you yeah. weird. So I think if we go out there and we don't put negativity on these things and yeah. completely look at it as a positive way, then I think maybe we would be teaching others to realize yeah. that there's nothing wrong with us. Exactly. And I make the weird mistake too. I just got called out on it. It's an equivocation I, I learned and I still do it. And it was, a, I was buying a crystal and mentioned something and the woman went, that's not weird. And I said, oh my God, thank you for calling me out. I actually do yeah. this as a career. But we all do. We all <laughs> we do. Because it's, it's like women. We don't, it's like not taking up space. Exactly. That's exactly what we are. I mean, we, we sort of go to the side because we don't want to be in the forefront. For, for whatever reason, because it is not, con it's considered weird. So we buy into that. But if we, as who we are, continue to buy into it and perpetuate it, it doesn't go anywhere. So I think we need to just bite our tongue. Um, but thank you so much for thank joining you for us. Thank you me. Thank you um, all of you. You were so kind. Thank you. We are kind. Um, <laughs> let's go around the room. Go back to Amadeus's button fly. <laughs> I'm hoping that none of your lovers have coom poonophobia. <laughs> Which is the fear of buttons. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> I never Oops, Cara, where can people find you? What are you what are you up to? I'm on um I, you know the usual places, Cara Noble <laughs> Cara Noble Voice. I'm around. I float. Cara's around. Jenny, what's going on with you? I am in the middle of uh, revamping up my uh, my show with the in-house comedy chat is now chat and go. So I'm in the process of redoing that and we'll be back again live in a week or two. And you can find me, uh, Jenny McNulty fan, if you add a fan to the end of, well, not the UBN Go Network, but Jenny McNulty fan, all one word on Facebook. Do you have um? Do you have any uh, comedians lined up for the June tenth show at the Ventura? Uh, not Harvard? yet. I don't know the lineup finalized yet, but it's going to be a big. It's already a, a gay show, but it's our pride show, so it's going to be super good. And we're going to try to, if it works out, uh, Jackie Loeb, who is oh yeah, you know Jackie. She we're going to try to get her in from Australia via via oh. sort of, uh, Skype or whatever. that'd be awesome. She's hysterical. Yeah. That would um, be fun. Yeah, just yeah. To have Mara, what's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, you can find me at uh, Mara Shane on Facebook and Instagram. Actually, it's Mara underscore Shane on Instagram and Mara Shane art dot com. Thank you. Cheryl. Thank you. Yeah, you guys can find me on my website. It's medium Cheryl dot com. Also, my Facebook and Instagram is also at medium Cheryl. So uh, follow me. I have some events coming up. Uh, later this weekend and also in june so that'll be fun thank you roxanne rosen hi everyone you can find me at roxanne rosen on facebook thank you and uh tony or christian who's who's sitting back there they're totally mia when it comes to this <laughs> <laughs> all right guys we're gonna sign off you already got the music cue um in any event um there is a good chance and i know i keep saying this but um, next month, uh, I don't have any guests yet for June, but the first Friday in June, um, I, I really, I, I wanted to go into the studio. We still may, 
It may be our first show in studio. I may I have a photo shoot that day. So hopefully if it doesn't coincide, then I'll be in the studio. Um, we're only allowed to have a certain amount of bodies due to COVID restrictions. So it's it won't diminish the amount of people on the show because why not? I mean, and eventually we'll have 15, 20 people doing the show at one time and it'll be fine. Um, but there are certain people that will be in the studio and then there were certain people that will be Zoomed, but it will still be the fun, fun, fun show. Um, and I really... Um, do encourage you people to call in. I keep begging you to call in. I, I don't know why you don't call in. Um, it's okay. Say what you want. Look at Joe. She has balls of steel. She'll call in every <laughs> fucking week. She calls. Um, doesn't matter. So we would want to encourage you to call in. Um, what a cute puppy. Um, and um, and thank you. I, just want to say, I mean, you know, I did my my rant earlier. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in week after week. Again, Instagram, QTE Brat, Facebook. I will continue. You, know, you can always go back to United Broadcasting Network and see the replay of this. Please share it. Um, go to the YouTube oh. page and you'll find it all over the place. So thank you so much for joining us. Be safe, be well. Oh Happy God. weekend. And um, I will see you in two weeks. Thank you, Christian or Tony, whoever's running the board. Um, and uh, it's a wrap. Everyone's showing off. <laughs> Everyone's got a pussy cat. Aww. I have a pussy cat. I have dog. <laughs> Thank you, Amadeus. I really enjoyed it. it was Thank really you. Great. Thank you for questions. I hope I helped. <laughs> Amadeus, yeah. I would like to know the name of the lady who um, did your chart and it had everything so accurate I... that you had the near-death experience. Oh, me? 